session continues maybe more of our learners will join so do you have any feedback about uh, the last two days interaction sir so, uh, we understand uh, i listen very carefully and i understand okay the concept and all here yeah. okay so and just uh, yeah and uh, rt also joined it now yeah yeah rc is there yes it's true mm-hmm. good morning sir yeah rt and pali they are also there welcome good morning yes okay so uh, just to take a overview of uh, what we uh, you know discussed uh, during the last two days today on day uh, first sir, yeah i have one question before starting this when i go through the this uh, study material i have go, i this at least one one line attracted me that is the distance education is compared as abhimanyu syndrome where entry is easy and exit is difficult Why it is like that? So entry is easy and exit is difficult. <laughs> very, very interesting, very interesting. But let me just tell you, uh, the open and distance education is slightly different. Yes, very true. It has different syndrome, and uh, as you very rightly said, that entry is flexible, but uh, exit is difficult. Yeah. Uh, yeah only thing i would just tell from my experience because i did uh, three four uh, degree and diploma programs uh, through this distance mode and i will tell you that if you make a calendar and uh, the activity schedule and ensure that uh, you complete each activity by the stipulated date and time i will tell you that this is the most uh, simplest form Uh, nothing comes on the way but only thing what happens that when we slightly deviate from the schedule uh, or uh, sometimes we just ignore certain instructions then there uh, comes there uh, appears to be little uh, challenges difficulties and sometimes yes i do agree but uh, if you just keep in touch with your region center or your coordinator and continues the dialogue uh, interaction and follow the schedule i will tell you that there is no other uh, system that allows you to uh, come uh, successful and quite easily so but one thing that you have to make a schedule you have to uh, put things on hard paper and then just go on you know uh, seeing that you uh, complete the particular activity by the stipulated date and time uh, and that way i think it is quite simple and quite easy to come with the good score and with the uh, with the satisfactory learning so we will move uh, <coughs> ahead so we have uh, rc chandigarh uh, had slightly joined uh, us uh, so we will uh, uh, take a uh, look back on the two days discussion and then we will go for today session and today's interaction uh, so you rightly said uh, distance education uh, yes it is a syndrome it is a phenomena uh, very true uh, distance education is basically uh, one of the essential Uh, sort of system that we have in the education scenario today you look you see any uh, conventional institute or university uh, technical universities technical institutions iits iims and other apex iisc bangalore uh, and other apex institutions which have reputation in certain fields very interestingly they are also coming up with the programs which are offered through uh, open and distance mode or rather as we were discussing yesterday open and distance education has another new uh, facets at, attached to it which is online education because previously the dis- open and distance education was actually using a lot of open access sources and uh, particularly uh, uh, online resources but uh, 
during the covid and post covid era the conventional system has also switched over quite heavily to the online mode and even today there are many institutions that continues to offer their programs through face to face mode as well as uh, or maybe partially face to face mode and partially uh, through the online mode and maybe some other mode that we discussed yesterday like uh, blended mode and uh, so forth so that we discussed yesterday that uh, what is the scenario of distance education today in our country <clears throat> and what actually the distance education is its role in the society its obligations and uh, it's and once it is there then there was issue of credibility so we discussed what is the credibility of distance open and distance education has been able to establish its credibility in the society how it has been able to take education forward and also bring skills and uh, Uh, information awareness to the masses so it has very rightly uh, justified its role besides so it has also broadened the access uh, and uh, appro- uh, uh, access and uh, approach to the system it has opened the door and uh, there has been quite uh, big uh, enrollment in the programs in distance education institutions that is because of the relaxed entries relaxed qualification uh, relaxed and a very broad choice of courses and above all the facility to the students uh, to study at their own place and pace so there are a lot of such things which makes open and distance education a flexible learning a blended learning a learning from home a learning at one's place and pace so that was there and it has done justice in the sense that it has uh, it has uh, strengthened the reach of the uh, masses the youth the working class and even those who are doing the courses for their own satisfaction not specifically for job or things but once they had some dream to pursue a particular course or particular education so all those are able to benefit so that way it has uh, it has done justice to the society in the field of education that it has provided the access and the reach to the masses yesterday we also discussed one very interesting phenomena of the distance learner Uh, in the emerging globalizing era so as uh, there are a couple of traits which we discussed like uh, pre agent it's a very interesting today the learner is not you know or does not want to remain attached to one institute to one program to one system to the prototype of the classroom or the epitome of teacher so all these issues are there and we discussed them how they are impacting the distance education and how the distance education looks at its emerging learner in the new globalized era uh, so these were some points that we discussed yesterday and day before day before in fact we just introduced the program and uh, we didn't m- discuss much so it yesterday we completed the block 1 today we are going to discuss the contents of the block 2 and let me just remind you and share with you that uh, the these sessions are not actually to teach very if uh, we may say honestly because you cannot teach uh, within such a short period the entire content that is provided in the uh, in the in the course so uh, primarily the objective is that you come prepared or you come uh, at least having gone through the study material and then this is the session where we can discuss issues we can discuss certain uh, uh, points which uh, you perhaps had little uh, not to proper understanding so this is basically the idea of the counseling sessions but nevertheless 
uh, when we don't have such issues. And uh, since uh, some of you have already gone through the study material, and as you said, that uh, if you carefully listen to the discussion, then a lot of issues are sorted out automatically. So uh, that I uh, really appreciate that uh, your attention to the discussion and uh, relating it to the study material. So today we will take up one very important aspect of the open and distance education. Uh, that is the philosophical foundations of open and distance education. I mentioned it before yesterday and yesterday also I have been saying this all along that whatever phenomena we have in the operation it must have some uh, some basis, some fundamental, some concepts upon which the system is built. So the same is case with the distance education. So there has been a long history uh, whereby certain ideas evolved and on the basis of those ideas distance education was initiated in different forms and uh, today we can see that it has grown into it is growing very strongly towards becoming an autonomous uh, discipline so we hope that uh, today's discussion will uh, clarify certain issues which are of philosophical nature uh, that means uh, there is a theoretical ground there is a conceptual base how distance education has been defined and what are its philosophical foundations and then some issues in the operational aspect that how because as the world changes the uh, operational uh, strategies that were evolved in 80s 90s 2000 the first decade of 2000 those are not working anymore uh, good morning morning so we have to understand that as the world changes, uh, the uh, educational scenario changes too fast. Welcome, welcome, no issue. You are welcome, sir. So the uh, scenario, uh, the educational scenario is changing very fast, very rapidly. That means, uh, and uh, more, moreover, the uh, conventional education uh, doesn't change that fast because or it can change, it can make accommodation because it uh, operates differently. But if you look at the functioning of the uh, distance education institutions, which are offering open distance education, they produce their own material, which is based on a very rigorous process. And it takes time, resources, hard work. So uh, to keep pace with the changing world, changing scenario and as a result, the new learner, it is quite a tough job and challenge to the distance education. But how to remain in touch, in, in, in consonance with the emerging situation in the society, in the world, uh, and different areas of operation. So we'll go uh, to the block two, which is philosophical foundations. <clears throat> As I mentioned just now, the uh, philosophy of distance education is based on certain uh, behavioral aspects, sociological aspects, and uh, other things like uh, we, uh, we have uh, uh, the very first uh, uh, unit that we are going to discuss in, uh, right now. Uh, is the defining distance education how to what is distance education how to define it and uh, uh, the very interestingly to define it in the changing scenario uh, you know it is a it's a, just it's a quite a big challenge so we will uh, uh, see how the the distance education has been uh, and how uh, this has been defined. So first of all, uh, I mentioned to you yesterday that uh, the contents of the uh, you know, programs or the courses or units are presented in a, a logical sequence. 
in a systematic manner. So that means first, if there is a unit which is defining distance education, then first of all, uh, the education, what is edu distance education? What are the peripheral issues? Uh, how does it become a distinct form of education? We will focus on this first. And then we will uh, go to the, uh, the the ideas that were given, that uh, were uh, floated by different scholars who, who are known uh, yeah, as, a, as, a, as a seasoned scholars of the distance education. Some names you might have uh, heard, like uh, Moore, Homburg, uh, Otto Peters, Michael Moore, Domain, and Charles Redemier. So we will come to their views because they have given uh, uh, different ideas. Each one has given one very di different and distinct idea. And uh, then putting all those together, distance education has been defined. But the very first uh, attempt that we will make is to understand that uh, distance education, how it is different, how in comparison to the traditional education, how it is different. So we, I think, had a lot of discussion yesterday that how it is different, uh, how is it different from the traditional education. We, you know, uh, we, we discussed one very important point yesterday, that distance education is learner-centered. It is learner-centered. Wherever, whereas the, the traditional education is teacher centered, I explained how teacher centered, how learner centered education. These are two different types of education. We all know that uh, the teacher centered education, which is a conventional mode of education, is where teacher has the all the authority to transact the teaching learning activities. Teacher will plan the schedules. Teacher will be there to transact the text in the classroom. Teacher will be there to evaluate. Teacher is there to see how many uh, classes you attend or you do not attend. And then is there any case to be made out of it? Uh, and above all, uh, in the conventional mode, it is believed that uh, the student will come to the classroom and he will be taught, he will be explained the contents of that particular course. And whatever the teacher says, that will be the final word. But in distance education, this is not the case. In distance education, the learner is autonomous. Autonomous, as we just now mentioned that uh, and the learner studies at one's own place and pace. The learner has a, a wider choice for opting the courses. The learner has option to move from one institute to another to, to get the credit transfer. And a lot of other facilities to the learners are there. So it, the distance education learner very rightly said, a distance education learner is a free agent. Uh, so uh, in that sense, the learner is more autonomous. And then we also know that a distance education is an indirect education. So it's not direct education. That would mean it is not only focused towards earning degrees, but it is also focused toward earning livelihood. So that means there is more room for experimenting with the education distance education. I'm sure if you have ever looked on the list of programs that are offered by distance education institutions, you might have found out that you might have found out that uh, the, the, the design of the courses is different. The, the area of the courses is different. And some of them are very basic in the sense that uh, they are the skill uh, imparting courses. At the same time, there are degree courses, there are research programs. Of course, these are very much there, and those are offered in tune with the uh, University Grants Commission's instructions and regulation. But at the same time, there is much more 
uh, opportunity to experiment with education. Say, for example, if I mentioned the the uh, health education programs of Indira Gandhi National Open University, much of the uh, the the bunch of the programs has come with the initiatives of Ministry of Health, and the Ministry of uh, Health and Welfare has been coordinating with the university to offer its program specifically in the uh, pandemic uh, era uh, or like uh, toxic disposal toxic material disposal and so forth same is the case with the, the nutrition sector there has been uh, quite a few programs cf and dec dnh and these programs have been uh, jointly developed with the help from uh, World Health Organization and also with the Ministry of Health and Welfare, including uh, uh, Ministry of Food and Agriculture. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, the distance education has more opportunity, has more scope to experiment with the education. Thereby, this is also known as indirect education. So we do not directly say that we are giving you this particular, making you a skillful person, but the program are offered in a way that they eventually uh, create skills, impart skills to the learners. One very important facet is, is the distance education. It's a, it's a lifelong education. It's very interesting. Yesterday, I perhaps I missed this term. It's a lifelong education. It's a real life education. How it is real life education? Look at uh, the programs of MA in distance education. Uh, there's a lot of scope to bring in your experiences. Because how, what do you feel about an isolated learner? What are the his or her feelings? What are the constraints in getting into an institution? Even after getting into the institutions, as one of our friends rightly said, that is difficult to accept. That is because the system is so centralized that sometimes if you do not keep track of your activities, your, your uh, assignments, your term and examination form submission, and uh, uh, schedules, etc., then definitely there could be some problem, I do agree. But I must say that uh, it's a real life education or lifelong education. Lifelong education in the sense that uh, there is no upper age limit. But a real life education means you can bring in your actual real life experiences into the education and you can build them as part of your uh, achievement study. Even while attempting assignments, if there is a question which says that you go to your neighborhood, visit a school, visit a community center, and just come um, come to know from the uh, members of the society what are their views about distance education, or do they really want a distance education, or if there is an open and distance education, is it really open? Do they understand what do we mean by open education? So uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, it, it gives an opportunity to synthesize your own real life experience. That is how we call it a prior learning uh, integration is there. Prior learning integration is there. Means whatever you have learned in your pre-entry uh, phase that can be integrated into it. A lot of our programs are based on it. So mass education program, health science program, food and nutrition program, agricultural program, uh, women and child development programs. There are a lot of programs which allows you to, you know, uh, integrate your prior learning uh, experiences or the knowledge. We, I said uh, yesterday also that uh, distance education has a trend or rather necessity to use technical terminology quite a lot. So uh, perhaps you might have noticed why do we are doing it because it is dealing with such a complex matter. It 
it is dealing with society it is dealing with system it is dealing with psych- with the psyche of the people it is dealing with the, uh, all uh, races all communities all age groups uh, uh, all the stakeholders in the development of the society so no sector is isolated or uh, no sector uh, is beyond the reach of distance education its planning and its promotion so that is how we are using terms which are of course pragmatic and loaded terms but ultimately they become your understanding very clear a very uh, lucid so that is how a technical terminology is used there and let me just refer you to the uh, unit structure that we have in most of the units at the end of the unit you will, you will uh, see that uh, there is a list of technical terminology which is used in the uh, unit that is provided there with explanation so my request is that you please go to uh, unit 1 2 3 of block 1 and then you will find them there uh, that there's a lot of uh, there's a very long list of technical terms which have been used as i i use the term prior learning etc So dear friends uh, as we know that uh, distance education what is distance education distance education is understood and defined by the contradiction by the contradictory statements because if we talk about that yes this is traditional education is teacher centered then automatically in the distance education is learner centered uh, then there is another issue uh, actually the term which i also uh, didn't mention the real uh, the distance education operates in the real life settings real life setting what is this real life setting uh, we all know real life settings means it's, it's not very technical in the sense and it is not very complex either real life settings means you res- you study at your home you study at your workplace yesterday uh, Well, please don't take it otherwise but i appreciated it one of our learner was listening to what we were discussing and at the same time perhaps if i am not wrong uh, was also uh, attending to her office uh, duties also partly so i didn't mind it at all i liked it in fact because that is real life setting education so this distance education allows this to happen allows this and we appreciate it that you bring in your real life experiences you explain how do you feel what are your constraints in obtaining or getting into or continuing the distance education so these are some of the issues which define distance education uh, let me just go through a little bit change Uh, distance education uh, uh, about the terminology that we have used for the uh, distance education i think we cannot uh, overlook the fact that uh, uh, the terminology has been very important to explain why uh, the, the names of the distance education by the nomenclature has uh, you know kept on changing over the period of time because at certain time we called it correspondence education then we said it is distance education today we are saying open education because each term has an implication because when the, there was correspondence education that would mean that there will not be any physical uh, contact with the tutor or the teacher uh, and there will be correspondence in terms of uh, exchange of letters or exchange of notes uh, etc but then it it, is, uh, it came a little developed from that 
and some sort of contact was established between the tutor, between the pupil and the tutor. So, but the distance remained because uh, we will, uh, in a little while, we will come to Michael Moore's view that what is distance education, how it is really defined. So he makes a very important point that Essentially, in distance education, distance education has an essential element, which is the separation of teacher and the pupil. We'll come to that. So, we, we are using a lot of technical terminology just to uh, clarify the concept of uh, the distance education at certain level. How it is becoming open, open in the sense that. Uh, uh, Today we have allowed uh, migration or uh, the credit transfer from one institute to another. And it is allowed internationally. Some of the IGNU students have been going to Canada, to Gulf countries, to Europe, and they are taking the credit transfer for the credits that they have owned in India. Of course, may not be 100%, but uh, some, some uh, transfer, some credit they are definitely getting. So, uh, you see, the distance education is, uh, how do we define it? We can define it that it is an individual study. It is an independent study. It is a home study. It is external study. It's an off-campus study. It's approximate education. I think we discussed all these yesterday uh, and day before. So uh, that would mean that all these features, uh, wherever we find these features with education, we can say this is the open and distance education. Uh, we will uh, uh, come to a very important uh, point now, uh, which is uh, which is the conceptual framework of uh, the open and distance education, or rather, let us for a while call it distance education. What is distance education? What is open learning? What is independent study? So these, all these, some of these terms have been used by Charles V. Jimier, uh, during uh, 70s and beyond 70s. Uh, he, uh, he used the term open learning, distance education and independent study. Uh, what he, uh, what contributed, he contributed is very important uh, for the distance education. Actually, he emphasized that learner is autonomous, a learner is independent. Uh, so this uh, he studies free from the campus. He studies off campus, and uh, he studies in his own environment. He studies not uh, with the uh, system that is teacher centered, but with the system that is learner centered. So that means he, all the activities are carried by self-direction. So Charles V. Demier is uh, known for giving a very solid conceptual framework for the distance education. With this term, the distance education is an independent study. He did use the terms open learning and distance education for a while, but ultimately he came very straightforward to declare that a distance education uh, is primarily an independent study. That means it is the, the, the learner is uh, autonomous, free from the campus and uh, continues to, uh, to study self-directed. This is very important, self-directed. So this idea was given by Charles V. Demier. So it is a... Uh, it's a study uh, which one carries at one's own place and place. So all these factors ultimately uh, uh, qualify the statement that is made by Charles P. Timier that it is a self-directed study. So that it means it is an independent study. So uh, he says it is an independent study. That means it is at a distance uh, from the institute, institution, from the teacher. So that is how distance education has been seen by Charles Wiedemeyer as an independent study. A very important contribution has been made by Michael Moore in the 70s and 80s. Michael Moore was a professor at Milton Keynes, British United Kingdom Open University. 
and uh, his contribution is very important he uh, gave three four important uh, uh, ideas he says that uh, the teaching behavior of the distance education are distinct that means uh, the learning that the, the teaching behavior of the distance education or the distance learner is slightly different he doesn't go to teacher his teaching is uh, rather carried through the study material or through the remote instruction and also uh, his learning behavior is different what is learning behavior learning behavior is the grasping the content or the or the information that is projected either in the classroom settings or through the um, through the self instructional material or self learning material that is given to the students so the the learning behavior is so he actually uh, uh, first time uh, points that learning behavior of the distance educator is different from the learning behavior of the uh, conventional learner full time learner and uh, then he also mentions that uh, face to face teaching and learning uh, should be part of the system he emphasized on this and perhaps eventually the contact program or the counseling sessions or the online sessions is result to that feedback thirdly he he makes a very important point that a lot of role is there for media uh friends the media we understand today in terms of uh, education has been very different in 70s and 80s we had media at that point of time it was telephone radio television tape recorder and so forth so the instant and live media that we have today was not there in 60s 70s and 80s so he He, he he understood the importance of media so for a very long time itnu indira gandhi national open university had remained supplying cassettes loaded cassettes of the contents which were recorded in the studios both audios and videos and those could be played on the tape recorders or on the video playing systems so that means he uh, he he noticed that the media has very important role and for very long time telephone had also served a very important uh, tool for uh, uh, linkages with the learners so that means uh, while uh, charles wittemeyer you know defined that uh, it is learners autonomy or it is an independent learning uh, michael moore actually said that uh, the teacher and learners remain separated Uh, the teaching and learning behaviors are different and more importantly he pointed out that media has very important role to it so this idea was given by michael moore <coughs> third very important contribution is the is the concept of self study uh, while uh, uh, Michael Moore has said that it is self. Uh, uh, Charles B. Demir has said that it is a self-directed study. Uh, Domain has uh, added a very important factor to it. What we call self-instructional material, SEM, or self-learning material, SLM. These terms that we have been using now very frequently. Actually, these terms were the concept given by Domain, a German. scholars or a distance educator uh, he said uh, that uh, whatever information you provide to the learner uh, he or she understands it through the self study so, so what is self study self study is actually operating the the uh, study material package learning from it we have a concept of ibt in built teacher some of the terminology you might not found in your course which is supplied to you but uh, we have been using the term ibt in built teacher 
just believe that the ignore material i'm only talking about ignore but it might be case with certain other institutions also which have produced their own study material that it uh, provides an inbuilt teach inbuilt teach that means the the contents are so logically presented that uh, within the content itself there the 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 student is being asked questions the student keep on answering those automatically as one progresses with the learning so that would mean that there is a, there is a logical uh, presentation of the contents whereby uh, a dialogue occurs unconsciously of course not very consciously it is unconsciously it is happening in the study material so domain uh, gave the idea of uh, distance education as self study education uh, self study uh, that uh, forms part of the distance education so he says the important thing that uh, in distance education the student or the learner also has the distinct responsibilities means when it is uh, self study that would mean that uh, the learner has to be responsible for the study so that means it is the study is self controlled and the responsibility is also assigned to the learner this is very important in the conventional education the teacher might be asked as to why the student is not grasping what are the handicaps what is the progress how it is not happening in distance education this responsibility lies with the learner the learner himself or herself have to be answerable to the question that uh, why they have not uh, grasped the contents or if they have understood it very clearly then it is their uh, good luck and also their hard work which has worked thirdly uh, domain also said that uh, the use of uh, uh, multimedia uh, in the educational communication that means he he brought the issue of educational communication previously we were we used only to talk about the learning he said that uh, the uh, there should be role of the educational media rather we can say that he attached the media to the education in the sense that it becomes an integral part of the educational process particularly in the uh, this open and distance education so very significant contribution self study self responsibility and also role of media in the distance education or rather we can say the concept of educational media he brought into the overall scenario of distance education very importantly uh, otto peters also incidentally all these three luminaries in the distance education were significantly contributing in the uh, in the initial half of 80s or the later part of 70s so otto peters uh, he gave an idea of the distance education very interesting definition what he said that uh, the distance education is provided through a set of systems through a method of systems through a system whereby knowledge skill attitude and rationalization is applied and uh, there is a division of uh, labor what is the division of labor that means the teacher in the open education in the conventional education teacher has a role student has a role teacher has to transact the business of teaching teacher has to arrange the classroom teacher has to arrange the evaluation and everything and besides the teacher has to do lot of other activities but when it comes to distance education open distance education lot of these activities are assigned to the learner so that means there is a division of labor that is one the second one is in the distance education everything has to be systematized the course has to be conceptualized it has to be written it has to be produced it has to be bound it has to be published it has to be distributed it has to be transacted 
Now all these activities takes place in a system whereby in the open edu- in the conventional education, so what happens? There is a board of study. Experts will sit together and s- design the syllabi. They will take a list of books from the market which are available and then prescribe these are the books. But this is not the case with the distance education. So this is very important. So w- what he said that distance open and distance education is an industrialized form of distance and teaching and learning industrialized form of teaching and learning this concept of distance education was given by otto peter he says it is a industri- industrialized form uh, now this is very important and uh, maybe some day a question will come to you in your assignment or in your term and paper what do you mean by the industrialized form of teaching and learning? Industrialized form of teaching and learning is essentially an aspect of the open and distance learning. And as I told you that uh, it happens that uh, all the activities in the distance education are based on the division of labor. Certain activities lies with the institution, certain activities lies with the teacher. But the majority of activities of, are also there with the learner. So the learner is also given a part of the labor work that takes place in the, in, in, in the process of teaching and learning. So in that sense, it is a industrialized form of teaching and learning. Very interesting, I'm sure. Are you, can someone confirm if I am audible, please, or clear? Yes, sir, you are clear and audible. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, this this uh, definition was given by Otto Peters. Very important uh, contribution. Very important uh, conceptual framework. Because uh, you see, I I had told you in the beginning itself, we have open and distance education. But what are the bases of it? What are the concepts of this? How it was conceptualized? So these people brought together bits and pieces. And then today we have very prototype, uh, very clear definition. But initially these, you know, small, small ideas contributed to you know, prepare the ground for the distance education. Warren homework. Warren homework was a uh, was a professor of uh, education in German, Germany, and uh, he also adds a dimension to the distance education. Uh, what he says the distance education is an organized program of education, organized form of education. What is organized form of education? Otto Peters said it is an industrialized form of teaching and learning. Born homework says it is a it's an organized uh, you know, system of uh, activities. What is organized system of activities? What happens in the distance education? Initially, I think very beginning, Preeti had said that entry is easy, but exit is different. And I clarified that yes, it is different, but if you follow the right track and keep on, you know, very uh, basically, every activity is ticked that yes, I did this, I did this, I did that, I did that, I did that. So everything here proceeds systematically. Just to, to give you an example, you took admission, you received confirmation. You received ad- I card. Le- you received study material. You received counseling schedule. You received notice for the assignments. You your assignment stipulated the, uh, has a stipulated dates for submission of attempted assignments. You received information that your examinations are to be conducted, or it is there might be information already given, but in a systematic manner. You have to fill in the term and examination examination form. First, you have to submit these assignments. Then you have to fill in the term examination form. Then you have to appear in the term examination. Then you have to have the result, etc. 
and for MAD program second year, you have to fill in re-registration form for second year. Pay the fee. Again, go through the same chain of activities. <coughs> so, Bornholm Mark says that uh, the distance education is 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 it appears to be organized educational program, which assures institutional support to the student and uh, what is institutional su uh, support to the student the student is given wh what i said all the list of activities will be supplied by the institution all the activities that have to be all the labor that has to be undertaken by the student has been communicated to you very clearly so it is a it is an organized uh, educational system or organized uh, educational management both on the part of the system as well as on the part of the learner so he gives uh, adds a new dimension uh, and but he said it is not very explicit what he says it is not very explicit it it is overlapped by one by another you submit the uh, assignments then you submit the determined examination form then you receive the hall ticket then you appear in the examination then for the second year you again submit the re-registration form then you pay the fee and so forth so it is it all the activities are covered under layers by one by another layer and then there is a whole set of activities layer by layer so you have to undertake that so it is organized educational transaction or a system so this is very important you know uh, that uh, we have these three four important uh, concepts that have been there uh, Otto Peters, Michael Moore, Charles V. Jimier, Domain and uh, born homework. You might have now gathered some idea why we call it industrialized for why do we call it an outside study? Why do we call it uh, uh, blended learning? Why do we call it uh, ICT enabled learning? Why do we call it online learning? Why do we call it learner centered learning, uh, teacher centering learning? So, all these uh, issues are there. So ultimately, we come to the conclusion. What are what is the what are the implications of these definitions to the distance education? So if we summarize this, we come to the conclusion that there is a separation of teacher and learner. This is a, because everything is happening. Like uh, Michael Moore said, it is uh, it is a self-directed study. It is an autonomous study. It is uh, the it is the uh, independent study. Media has a role, and it is an organized form of education. It is an industrialized form of education. The, all these things do not happen in the conventional system. This is what I am emphasizing, and this is what is emphasized in the uh in your material also so you have to study all the you have to understand all these things from your own experience you can now recall how did you study in the conventional system and how the dis open distance education operates the education so there is a conclusion there are four or five points four or five points are that uh, there is a separation of teacher and learner that is that is what I should say, the basic characteristic of distance education. Then the, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a organized set of activities for the distance education programs. Then there's a place for media. Now we know that what we are talking about the role of media the the organized set of activities is to provide learner supports uh, to the students so what is learner support 
there's a region center there are there are study center there are learner support center there are coordinators there is a headquarter all these nodes will try to reach the learner and see that the necessary information because today we are using much and much lesser uh, in terms of written letters written communication so all of you have enrolled to the online mode so your email your whatsapp your other media that you have registered with the university to receive information i am sure routinely giving you the information about your program about your activities about your forthcoming schedules and so forth then the another feature is that there is a separation of the learner from the peer group in classroom education we usually see that there are peer groups and students learn in groups but it doesn't happen in the distance education so i personally i personally uh, request you that you form peer groups maybe remote groups but uh, keep in touch and if one person in the group has information please do pass it to the other members of the group then finally it is an industrialized form of education i mean i have already explained to you what is industrialized form of education <clears throat> so uh, there is a slight uh, uh, justification why do we have this the 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 distance education why do we have open and distance education so another scholar uh, kegan in late 80s he he came up with an idea why do we have the uh, distance education so what he said it is a sort of responsibility of the system to provide information now i am using the word term information information doesn't mean entertainment information doesn't mean simple information information means educational contents and then he says it provides educate information that means it provides education he says it 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 uh, allows the learner to integrate the prior learning or the previous learning to the present learning which is being pursued so that way it is an express function expression function and then uh, it is another it's a, it's a control function what is control function the, the distance learner behaves in a typical manner he studies at night he studies in the morning he studies by looking at the television he reads the newspaper and students say ah oh, there is a very good uh, topic which is relating to my course and i will take a note from the newspaper and add it into the study material or my learning or to my assignment and then uh, you see there is another function social contact function that is the learner is attached with the group so he in a way he or she forms a social group what is uh, what is uh, achieved through that it's a, it's a, it's a stimulating factor that means yesterday i told you distance education has a multiplier multiplying or multiplier effect that means if one person comes to know about the distance education and if he or she is enrolled in distance education program his family is automatically encouraged once his family is encouraged neighborhood is encouraged neighborhood is encouraged society is there eventually it reaches the whole uh, district whole state and what not so that is how uh, most of the four uh, state open universities are functioning there are 14 open universities in the country of which the national university is indira gandhi national university which has national and international jurisdiction and ultimately it is enrolling 8 to 10 lakh students in every 
admission cycle. So all these factors, all these are small additions to the overall structure of a distance, open and distance education that we see today. So this was the, uh, the, the contents or the idea of contents that we have in the law three. Now, now what is more important is that uh, uh, distance education has certain open distance education has certain other uh, implications. And those are that uh, the kind of classroom live feedback that we have in the classroom that is not there. These are certain implications. How to deal with it? How to provide feedback? Feedback at the right time, at the right point of time, and especially during the perusal of the program. So, so that is how we have the assignments. Why do we have assignments? It is the continuous monitoring of the learner's progress. The idea of assignment is to monitor the continuous program, or continuous progress of the learner. How a learner is studying, whether is he is grasping the contents or there is still need to modify the approach, so forth. So these are the implications. Another one, that uh, separation of the teachers learners is there. Then, uh, 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 it's a hard language. You you will find that uh, the technical terminology is not that simple to understand. It is little complex, but it is very important to remember that without using the technical terminology, we cannot explain the conceptual understanding of the uh, open and distance education because it is operating in a different environment. It is involving the behavioral science, the information science, the social science, and also uh, the globalized impacts in the area of information, in the ge uh, uh, geographical uh, turmoil situations, all these are impacting the educational scenario. So to very categorically clarify these things, we use the technical terminology. So in a nutshell, we can say, to understand the complete concept of, uh, of, of a subject or of an issue which is under discussion, we need to use the technical terminology. We discussed four persons. Uh, those are Charles Wittemeyer, Michael Moore, Roman, Otto Peters, and Mon Homer. But uh, uh, we will uh, again focus on the contribution made by these people, especially in uh, defining the terms like independent study, like uh, individualized study, like uh, uh, autom automated study or autonomous study, or industrialized form of study, or uh, the media, uh, the information and uh, communication technologies mediated study. So there will be different approach in the coming discussion uh, with regard to the terms that we have used uh, in the discussion previously. So it is almost uh, one hour that uh, we have been discussing. Uh, this is uh, time to recapitulate it. Maybe, uh, would you like to ask some question? Any of our learners has to say anything? 
No, sir. I think it's clear. Thank you so much. Okay. No, sir. It's carry on. Carry on. Sorry. Yes, Priti. So you carry on, sir. It is clear. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, yes, sir. For me too. Okay. Welcome. Okay, okay. So we have used terms like uh, independent study. We have used terms like uh, industrialized form of study. We have used terms individualized study. So these terms have uh, far more, you know, deeper implication to the open and distance education. Um, why the scholars used these terms? This is the point. This is. Uh, this needs to be, you know, uh, looked into more deeply. Uh, we said uh, Charles V. Demir said uh, it is an independent study. Uh, why do we call it independent study? This is very important. How it is independent? What describes independence? That means uh, a learner has uh, broken from the system, or a learner has totally disconnected herself or himself from the system. Yes. So, uh, yes, sir, it is in terms of flexibility of time. It is in the terms of flexibility in time. Right? This is what you said, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, if you uh, look at, it is not only time, it is uh, place, it is uh, selection, of course. It is, there are a lot of uh, issues, there are a lot of uh, things that the yeah, learner many, has. Many added. factors are there. So, it is the autonomy of the learner. So that is why we call distance learner autonomous learner. It is the autonomy. I think we want autonomy na, in many ways. So this is the autonomous learning. What is autonomous learning? Autonomous learning is basically uh, the learning which is controlled by the learner self-study, self-direction, self-motivation, self-evaluation, self-checking, self-comparing. Everything has a term self. But we also used it is a, it is an activity which is organized educational activity. It has to be organized. It cannot be haphazard. Even though it is autonomous in terms of place, space, time, and all sorts of uh, independences that the learner has with at his or her disposal. But at the same time, it is highly organized learning. That would mean there is an element of self. Self, what is self? Self means swa. But it doesn't mean only I am, I am, what is I am? I am me only with responsibility. Otto Peter said, it is a very interesting definition. It is industrialized form of education. What is industrialized form of education? Division of labor. What labor work was there for the teacher is now divided and a lot of labor work has been assigned to the learner. Isn't it interesting? So the student the learner has to carry a lot of labor work also. That means a learner has to keep track. He will not be reminded that you did not submit the assignments. He will not be reminded quite often that you failed to submit the 
examination form it is duty of the learner to see that while he is self directed self motivated self organized self dictated and what not but he has to keep track that he does them routinely systematically and if i may not be understood wrong the word religiously he should do all these things very religiously that would mean he should not miss even single chain single uh, single link from a chain otherwise the chain will be broken so along with autonomy responsibility is also given to the learner and along with the responsibility labor has been divided a major part of the laborious work has come to the learner this concept made it industrialized form of teaching and learning right <clears throat> uh, dr krishna has also joined welcome so this is very important now uh, we have another concept which is the uh, charles v demier has given us he says while there is a distance between there is a separation between teacher and learner the transaction uh, you see happens in a structural system now i do not know whether you have uh, related the structural word or the structural word to learning or not what is structured learning what is structured system can someone or would someone like to elaborate on it okay uh structural system structural system is something which is very systematically lined up it is very clearly defined a then b and if something happens with b then you move to c that means no link of a stream or a chain of work or chain of assignments chain of responsibilities has to be missed so all these are structure means very clearly defined so charles v demier has these three uh, points there is a separation there is a autonomy and there is a system which is highly structured that means structure means very clearly defined and defined for a purpose that these are not violated i would like to discuss one small issue here what are the implications of independent study we have already discussed it quite a lot but still i would like to make a point while the learner is autonomous dependent to study the learner is also independent to set the achievements and goals that would mean whether the learner wants to obtain distinction moderate score a pass score one independent study also defines what are the resources at hand with the learner whether the learner is having accessibility to the online sources discussion groups media technology or any number of resources the system will not interfere 
these are all responsibilities of the learners so independence is fine but at the same time the whole the whole set of activity the whole set of responsibilities will also passed on to, to the learner so uh, if we look at uh, a small hierarchical order of the activities there is a remote teacher there is a remote learner there is a subject matter which is to be taught and learned there is a media which is which is to communicate and there is a virtual classroom situation as you can see today we are in a virtual classroom situation so all these things are there and these are the concepts of charles v demier we'll move forward with the the advocacy of uh, michael moore michael moore has uh, also advocated the independent study michael moore is uh, more refined in his notion of independent study he sees independent study with the different uh, say for example the different situations he says there is a there is a uh, there is an element of apartness you know apartness a p a r t n e w s apartness he agrees with the distance but also add that there is an element of apartness a p a r t n e w s very interesting these concepts are very very, very uh, simple yet very crucial these are the different variables of distance education there is distance there is apartness and then there is a different school of environment the learner has a different school of environment if we go to classroom situation we go to a different set of environment where everything is prototyped teacher centered teacher controlled but when we come to the distance education it is learner centered learner controlled and it's a different school of learning or different environment in which the learner learns uh then there is an element of contemporaneous contemporaneous rather we can say everything happens in the present that would mean the learner has to learn from the contemporary situations because the open and distance education is teaching is imparting education to new learner in the globalized era in the digitized era so everything that is conceived uh, taught and learned has relation to the contemporary situations and what happens between these situations what remains there is a remote dialogue and there is an individualization what is this individualization this in distance education in open distance education every learner is every learner is individual learner but at the same time every learner is part of a group learning i am able to reach all of you at the same time i am i am able to reach each one of you i am reminded of a statement about radio radio is a medium of one and all so distance education open and distance education is a form of education for one and all while i address the concerns of all of you i am able to address the concerns of each one of you 
this is the beauty of it so uh auto peters has uh, given all these ideas which are very basic yet very important now uh, we will come to a point uh, where uh, the autonomy of the learner is discussed and how do we look at the autonomy of the learners the autonomy of a learner is uh, basically uh, if we look at the traditional education system uh, there is a thrust from the above on the conventional education there is a thrust from the above what is thrust from the above it is a top down model top down model i think if your student uh, if you have been a student of management or if you have ever studied the management there are two types of management bottom up management and top down management or top level management so where participation of the lower strata of workers is appreciated it is bottom up level management same is there with the traditional education system vis a vis open and distance education system so it is a top down model which is system centered model which is operating in the conventional education but if you look at the distance education it is bottom up model that means it begins with the concerns issues of the learner so it means every autonomy is with the learner learner is in the center of planning not shall distance learner is in the center of planning everything is determined on the requirements on the concerns of the learners so this is the autonomy of the learner so it means if the learning operates in bottom up model of education means it is it is planned it is progressed it is delivered it is transacted as per the preferences as per the needs as per the choices of the learners uh we will come to so michael moore has uh, uh very specifically I, i think i mistakenly said uh, auto peters but this was michael moore so this autonomy is very important i think it was interesting to share with you these the two uh, models that works in the education system top down model which is conventional model and bottom up model which is the distance education model rather uh, learner autonomous model of education so this was independent study model which was uh, given by charles b jimier and michael moore also further this idea and added new elements to the idea very importantly uh, we have to see the contribution made by auto peters uh, and uh, borch homer as well as john bath there are three more uh, important thinkers of open and distance education interestingly all these people were at their uh, zenith prime during 70s and 80s that is how we see 70s and 80s as the golden period of open and distance education rather distance education when it was it was conceived the way it is developed today new ideas elements were attached to it and a systematized form of education 
uh, was uh, put forward as an alternate model to the conventional education. We have already discussed a little while ago that uh, distance education is basically an industrialized form of teaching and learning. Otto Peters has said, I explained to you already what is industrialized form of education. Division of labor, change of responsibilities, execution of activities in a systematic way, planning, then execution of the plan in a very refined, defined way, or rather, if we use the term structured way. So now we will see uh, what is the rationale? Why did Otto Peters call distance education is an industrialized form of education of teaching and learning? Why did he say that? Uh, Otto Peters was the head of the open education in one of the uh, very important industries in Germany, firm in a start during mid 70s. And he had previously worked with distance education with different institutions. So he had a very refined and very long understanding of different education. Uh, what uh, provoked him, what prompted him to say a book, uh, say that, that uh, distance teaching is an industrialized form of teaching and learning. He says that uh, uh, it is uh, the, the industrialized form of education is the kind of education that operates its, it, its contents in a methodological way. Any industry, if you look at and coming to education, the didactical, the dialogic process that undertakes, that happens between the distance teacher is bound to be of higher degree in a cognitive domain. You understand the word cognitive domain means where things have to be seen and understood, cognition. The role of the teacher in distance education is always at a higher level. But in conventional education, the role of teacher is also higher. But there he does not lower his role of being higher level in, or higher degree in education. So didactical intention of the distance education or the teacher in the higher education is to lower the degrees in psychomotor and affective domains. Psychomotor and affective domains. That means the learners in, in the learners environment the teacher has to come to the level of the learner in a way in industry every production line is operated by same type of people if there is an assembly line all the people who are working in the assembly line will have same degree. So similarly, in the area of psychomotor and cognitive domain, that is the learner's environment, the teachers of the distance education might be having higher degree of uh, academics, has to lower down his level and become part of that general strata just like industry which makes a production and here the contents are 
deliver to the learner in a way that teacher and learner are at some point of time or at the same level very refined very subtle understanding of the term industrialized form of teaching and learning now another point that otto peters made is also very important he says that there has been a tremendous change in the teaching learning methodologies very true if we look at the conventional mode of education Uh, there is only teacher and a group of learners and the medium is audio the transaction is through speech through lecture but if you look at the distance education the media has changed similarly as it happened in the industrial production house there is always different types of tools that are adopted to communicate with the with the group of production house so similarly in the teaching also to reach the learners we use different types of media to reach them now if we look at the distance learning the student at the distance learning his or her characteristics are very different from the learners of the conventional system in the conventional system we normally see that all the students have almost same level of understanding because all of them either come to classroom situation by entering into qualifying examination or some entrance test or some kind of evaluative mechanism which determines that at least they are all of them are having at least a certain level of understanding but if you look at the distance education learner this is not the case there is a heterogeneity there is a class variation there is an age difference any number of such variables are there which distinguishes between one and another distance learner and thereby makes a heterogeneous group of learners so all these issues are very important to the distance education so we have already discussed division of labor mass production of teaching material now this is also one factor why distance education is uh, industrialized form of education mass production of teaching materials in igno in ma in english program at one point of time we enrolled 60000 students in one single admission cycle in mba program the university used to enroll 30 40000 students in every enrollment cycle so if you enroll 7 8 9 10 lakhs of students each students will have for one particular semester five to six courses each course will have five books or six books so that means one students will be supplied 20 to 30 books imagine 8 to 10 lakhs fresh admissions 2 to 3 lakhs re-registration in the second year third year second semester third semester how much material will be required let me just add up here situation is different today with at least you those who are enrolled online the clear fortunately the production is not there to that level but still a good number of learners are 
opting for the study material in print form and still trucks and trucks and trucks of loads of material are going out from the university and reaching to the students at far end of nook corners of the country. See mass production of the study material. So in distance education, because we have opened the doors for education to relax the entry system, broaden the choice of courses, whole lot of autonomy is given to the learner. So that means a large body of students is coming to the distance education. And we are operating the distance education we not exclusively on the pattern of the industry, but somehow the phenomena of the industry is there in the operations of the distance education. So that is how it is called the mass production of teaching materials. It happens in produce the materials for the student. Ultimately, it becomes part of the distance education management. So these are some of the issues. So uh, let us not go into, let us come to a very important point. <coughs> Pedagogical aspects of the autopitus thing. Pedagogical aspect. I hope you understand what is pedagogy. Do you understand the term pedagogy? Science of teaching. It is the science of teaching. So a teacher is a manager, just like an industry. And uh, there is a whole lot of production material, that is books, that is uh, which are in print form. There's audio, video. Uh, these days we have the soft form of contents, digitized contents, and a uh, lot of other forms of activities are taking place in the education system, which are similar to the industry. I will come to the contribution that is made it by that is made by the watch homework. Uh, he uh, gave an idea of the guided didactic conversation. What happens in the distance education? The teacher, uh, what a teacher does? The teacher is not physically present, but the the, the, the dialogue is guided. There is a conversation between the teacher and the learner. The learner is supposed to do the self-study, independent study, study at uh, his or her own place and pace. Yet, as I mentioned, there is an inbuilt teacher in the study material itself that guides, that provokes the learner to talk to the study material, to talk to the, to the contents, and then ultimately come up with his or her own answers. So this uh, is also seen as a guided, guided didactic conversation. So the, the basic uh, idea is to introduce uh, interactive educational media is to add such techniques to the study material, to the self-learning material, that one finds that there is a there, there is a teacher which is speaking, which is actually making a dialogue, which is there as a didactic media. So the media, uh, why media is going more and more strongly in the educational sector? It is because there is a need to 
to be there even while the learner is autonomous in learning learner is independent learner is doing the individualized study yet uh, the learner needs somebody maybe ex not uh, explicitly implicitly to be with there as a built technique into the system so there is a need for interactive educational media uh, and uh, the strengthening of educational media will only strengthen the distance education now we come to the last uh, thinker of the uh, philosophical foundation uh, with regard to the open and distance education it is john bath so john bath uh, has advocated one very important aspect of the open and distance learning all of us are doing uh, assignments what are assignments can someone explain if uh, they have understood what is the objective of assignment any one of you all of you have received the assignments anyone listening yes sir we have we have downloaded the assignment okay so can you uh, explain what is the purpose of assignments ha uh, arthi can you explain wh what do you understand why there are assignments in order to share our view points regarding the understanding of the topics hmm. very true very correct so this idea was evolved by john bath he felt that there should be communication between the though during his period there was only postal communication but this is very important uh, concept that was uh, 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 systematically produced forward and it became concrete part of the distance education he said initially there was two way postal communication it, it in earlier days of distance education they, there used to be postcards written by the learners and they reached to the program controller or whosoever was in charge and then there will be back cards with the comments of the teacher so uh, it was felt that it, there is need to uh, have a dialogue with the learner to break the monotony of the learner because the learner learns in the industrial kind of settings and it is an individual study home study it is self directed study so there was no other mechanism to find out whether the learner is doing right or will need help so just to just to monitor the learner a system of assignments has been uh, evolved and it is a two way communication written communication through the teacher tutor comments so you attempt the assignments send it to the tutor or the teacher and then teacher writes the comments which are called tutor comments and those are referred back to the student so this idea was given by the john bath because he felt that uh, what he, uh, he 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 stated so i will read his statement this will be interesting to listen to and discuss there was a clear tendency to reduce the amount of postal two way communication in the teaching system uh, this was the implication of 
John Barr's observation. He he says that uh, as a course writer, editor, tutor, and course designer, uh, it is the duty of all these who have helped in preparing the course to keep the students stimulated. And if all these are able to keep students stimulated in his isolated settings, that will be a great achievement. And uh, rather, it would be in the best interest of the educational system to activate, to keep the learner activated, motivated during his time of stress, time of isolation, because we also, we are, we are all human beings. We might want isolation, but learning does not happen absolutely in the isolation. So to break the monotony of isolation or the break to, to keep the learner stimulated, motivated during the times of isolation, it is required that there is a mechanism of two-way communication. So this idea was given by the park and uh, as a result, we have assignments even today. <clears throat> now there is a question uh, as to why, what is the real purpose of the uh, assignments. As I mentioned, it's the communication between the learner and the uh, teacher. And it helps the teacher uh, to reduce the uh, to 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 reduce the stress of the learner, because by the, uh, the encouraged or by the positive comments of the tutor, the learner gets stimulated to learn more vigorously and also more objectively. So this is very important. John Bath also spoke about the pre enrollment That is, before admission, there should be a system whereby the teachers must make clear to the learner about his or her abilities, about his or her uh, 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 scope of learning, uh, about his or her interests, whether they could. <laughs> Uh, in terms of uh, <laughs> So now we have uh, some ideas, some views uh, born homework. I spoke uh, previously about the guided didactic conversation that is uh, two-way communication between the teacher and the learner. So why it was needed? Homburg emphasized the need that the sense of I and we is very important. Until and unless the sense of I is broken, I think we have a guest. So we have a little guest, and uh, it's nice to listen to the little guest. So I was talking about the uh, uh, board's homework's philosophy of distance education. He spoke about the guided didactic conversation. Uh, already I have emphasized the need why the conversation or the didactic conversation why it is important uh, and what is the need of it in the distance education. 
so basically it is to encourage two way traffic that means Uh, we need to uh, encourage the learners for the uh, we need to encourage the learners in terms of uh, isolation uh, so for this we need the guided didactic conversation this is very important aspect of learning because this allows to uh, understand the implications of i in the open and distance education so until and unless we break the sense of i that means the uh, that means the superiority of the teachers or the dominating role of the teachers or the uh, epitome of teachers in the classroom situation and become we that means as it was mentioned in the industrialized form of learning that uh, the 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 higher degree of teacher has to come down to the level of the assembly line functionaries and then become one with that strata similarly when the higher level of uh, academic degree is broken and it is brought down to the level of the learners the teacher become part of the learning community the students and there is a sense of weness the feeling of weness it is not possible to impart a fruitful and objective instructions or imparting education so born homework has given this very important idea which is the didactic guided conversation so it is to promote two way learning and i must emphasize that uh, this uh, strategy is very important even though it was given in the very beginning yet it continues to be there in form of the importance that is attached to the activity of assignments so uh, with this we come to the uh, end of the conceptual framework that was given by the different scholars of distance education to uh, strengthen to consolidate the uh, earliest Uh, to to the earlier form of education and then eventually it became a distinct discipline of education and today the this distinct system which was initially called postal education home education independent study industrialized form of study it was later came to be recognized as distance education and eventually open and distance education as we see it today so let me just remind you that bors homeworks contribution is very important because he was able to reach to the infinite variety of learners and attend their problems and then he was able to promote the uh, immediate feedback to the students by way of interaction or two way didactic communication perhaps using uh, different types of media and also uh, uh, through the didactic uh, guided didactic communication he was also able to establish or rather his intention was to establish peer group interactions uh, all these ideas were also appreciated by david seward another stalwart in the field of open and distance education he was aware that uh, the until and unless the basic human element is not incorporated in the industrial form of education it will not be uh, it will not flourish so he also appreciated the john homeworks idea of guided didactic conversation that means to promote two way traffic and broke down the monotony of i and bringing down the sense of us or we thereby appreciating the feelings of one another that would mean 
that uh, teacher and the learner have to be there on the same level of understanding that whether that is the psychomotor domain or the cognitive domain uh, both have to be on the same level to make the understanding fruitful finally there is a small emphasis on the emerging operational concerns of the open and distance education all of us know that uh, there is a there, there is an issue of distance education vis-a-vis -vis information and communication technologies there has been networked collaborative learning and uh, this has been there for a very long time through television radio and at some point of time through the medium of telephone prior to that it was through postal communication so today the entire scenario is changed now we have uh, very remotely yet very extensively coordinated conferences we have audio conferences video conferences we have networked conferences we have email we have internet and so forth so in the current uh, or the emerging operational uh, arena of open and distance education uh, we have while we have lot of advantages at the same time we have lot of concerns also as to whether media is actually able to reach if there is media whether it is being properly utilized uh, we know that internet uh, mediated or facilitated communication has made impact on the education to a great level yet uh, there is a concern whether the entire body of learners is able to take benefit of it or there are issues about it so we have to see we have to analyze critically the role of communication technologies we it, it, in the current scenario we cannot also overlook it the role of the communication technologies yet uh, the network collaborative learning is going further more and more institutions universities technical institutions are coming forward to offer courses through the network collaborative learning in which the teachers and uh, the learners are active participants and sharing their knowledge resources knowledge where but all this has to be seen in terms of the quality issues that are there uh besides quality issues there are economic arguments can we sustain this type of education because uh, at a certain point of time to introduce technology may see may seem and sound uh, 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 uh an appropriate uh, alternate or uh, mechanism yet in the continuous process uh, whether it is maintained whether it is sustained sustained on what terms and condition is very important certain other issues in the open and uh, distance education today which are part of the emerging operational concerns includes the monitoring of open and distance education the evaluation methodologies objectively evaluating the learners the economy issues and more importantly since there is a research programs in the open and distance education institutions on the guidelines of university grants commission there are issues of research uh, there are issues concerning the quality of research and staff development so uh, within the parameters of uh, emerging operational concerns 
is a whole lot of issues which have deeper concerns to the institutions uh, and i'm sure our learners uh, you will go through the study material more carefully uh, because the study material is a pointer in a sense but the actual feel feeling or sense has to be brought into with the peripheral study learning on these issues and then perhaps we can make our study more objective and perhaps that is the intention of the study material that it encourages you to make your own survey to go through various reports which are produced by different uh, autonomous agencies ministries other survey groups on all these important aspects of open and distance education so dear learners today we have discussed the unit 3 uh, and 4 uh, which uh, were based uh, unit 1 2 3 and 4 of block 2 which were based on the philosophical foundations emerging operational issues and uh, also uh, the uh, definitions of distance education so our discussion is uh, just to pinpoint the topics that we have and also conceptually discuss them uh, you are required to study uh, them in more uh, uh, with more focus and my deep request is to you know uh, complement your information with your field experience with your prior knowledge your professional uh, information and also debates on media print and electronic and various other uh, forms of uh, information on the relevant issues maybe then you can come out with excellent assignments as well as term and attempt so with this i conclude this session for today and uh, if there is any question we can attend to that otherwise we can conclude this session any questions so uh, i do feel that uh, we uh, our learners do not have any questions for today but tomorrow we will take a review of uh, the three sessions and then we will proceed with our next block that is block 3 and uh, the block 3 would deal with the very important uh, aspects of open and distance education uh that is uh, just let me go to the Yes, tomorrow we will discuss the growth and uh, the present status of open and distance education, which will have topics like historical perspective, international scenes of open and distance education, and uh, uh, overall survey of uh, the globe uh, with respect to the distance education, its growth and present status, which will be uh, further supplemented by. the discussion on distance education in south africa and south africa uh, will uh, include uh, all the nations that are there in the continent and uh, this will include uh, the various factors that are impacting the open and distance education in the region so i close down the session with these remarks that 
tomorrow we will have review of the discussions that we had during the last two days and today or all these three days and the topic for tomorrow will be the growth and present status so arthi should be uh, is there any question or should we uh, conclude the session no sir so okay yes sir have a good day yeah. so we'll meet tomorrow bye bye thank you sir okay